Hey, thank you so much for watching. I'm Pippi Peterson. You can connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, as well as my website at pippinings.com, where you can also get your Ready Row t-shirt, as well as other RV living supplies. So this video has a lot of information in it, a lot of details, so I've got an accompanying blog post for you to reference for all this information written out, and you can find that in the link in the description of this video. So living in an RV, I don't like to have a lot of chemicals in use because, you know, it's such a small space, it's hard to get away from the smell and the smells linger for quite some time. So I have a couple different ride or die chemicals slash minerals that I use for the toughest of jobs around the RV, including declogging drains, cleaning out holding tanks, washing floors, general surface cleaners, glass cleaners, and some really tough jobs like soap scum and baked on stains and grease spots. So the great thing about using the minerals and chemicals that I do is that they work for multiple tough jobs and I don't have to buy more expensive ones from the store and store all those unique niche products. I can just have the ones that I use and they work for different things. So starting from the top, and when I say top I mean uh, top of uh, the pH scale. So a quick, very basics on what the pH scale is. You have 1 to 14 and 7 being in the middle. 7 is neutral, that's water. And at the, at the lower numbers you've got acids and the higher numbers you have bases. So those can be called basic or alkaline. So one of my absolute favorite products is called washing soda. That's not to be confused with baking soda. Washing soda is sodium carbonate. Baking soda is sodium bicarbonate. You can put baking soda in your mouth. You cannot put washing soda in your mouth. The chemical makeup is uh, very minor, but uh, because of it, you know, it makes washing soda more alkaline and also, uh, you know, caustic. You don't really want to put it in your mouth. Next is a water softener and uh, particularly this brand. However, its ingredients have become a mystery uh, in the last several years, so I <laughs> don't know exactly what's in here, uh, but there's a lot of um, speculation and information online. Then there is a uh, Castile soap, which is a mildly alkaline uh, biodegradable liquid soap. The next one is uh, laundry detergent. It's this one. I like this brand Foca. It's got like five ingredients, so you know what's in it. Uh, plus it has enzymes. This is one of the, you know, it's like on the bottom shelf at laundry, uh, you know, in the laundry section. So they don't, they want you to buy the more expensive name brands one. Anyway, this one's called Foca. And uh, there's a couple differences between the cheap laundry detergents. Uh, this one in particular is like 30 cents more than the other cheaper one. And it has enzymes in it. So uh, if you're going to get one, get one that says enzymes as well as, you know, the other basic five ingredients. And uh, that's, a, that's in the middle of the pH scale, just as water is. I use distilled water. And then the other product is uh, white distilled vinegar. So let's talk about the first really tough problem or task to take on in an RV, which is cleaning your holding tanks. By the way, I have bought so many different RV holding tank cleaners, and I, you know, I, I just can't seem to get them to work, you know, especially when they say it's ultra concentrated and you put like this much down, and I noticed that it smells wretched, and uh, you know, there's two different wretched smells. There's the natural smell of the holding tank, and then there's the smell with like some really strong chemicals that make it smell like a porta potty. It's gross, and I don't find that they keep the smell away or you know clean it very well. So th this is what I have found to be my absolute favorite laundry detergent. And again, I use uh, you know this cheap stuff with minimal ingredients and uh, the enzymes. By the way, the other great thing about this laundry detergent, it does come with perfumes in it, and they are so strong, <laughs> they will give you a headache if you store them inside. So that means it's a great mice repellent. So I store it outside in my holding tank area where I can let the valves open and stuff. So also works as a mouse repellent. 
anyway, uh, what I put down my tank is laundry detergent. The laundry detergent is for bubbles. It's the surfactant. And uh, it, you know, it's just like what soap does. It bubbles up, it attaches to the grease particles, and then they can be washed away. The other great thing that I like is a water softener. This one in particular, it is a 10 on the pH scale, which is great because as we go up in the pH scale, we are going to get more grease stain and soil fighting power from that higher pH level. So it's got a 10 and it's a pretty strong water softener. And uh, there's a couple things in the tank that you have to consider. One is smells. One is the actual soil and grease that needs to be removed. And the other is hard water buildup. So this one is going to really attack the hard water that gets stuck in there. And you know, uh, then other things get stuck to that. So this will help get the hard water away. Then there is washing soda, which is even higher on the pH scale. My uh, probably my favorite uh, mineral to use for so many different things. And this one is also, in a way, a water softener. It is also binding to those, you know, calcium particles. <laughs> uh, however, they they work a little differently. Plus, it has a higher pH. So I like to combine both of these. One for the higher pH, plus a uh, different kind of uh, uh, mineral molecule binding thing, as well as this one. Some people, they say borax, and uh, or borax, and yes, you can also use borax. I definitely use borax as well. It is lower on the pH scale, and it dissolves better than these two. In fact, they dissolve in about the this order. This one dissolves fastest and best. This one's medium, and then this one dissolves a little bit slower and not as much. This one's binding power with the hard water minerals is not as reactive. So you get more of it dissolved, but it doesn't react and bind as much. This one is dissolving a little bit, a little bit less and reacting a lot better. This one is dissolving a little bit less, but you want to keep this one because it's got the higher pH. So if you want to be even more complicated, you can use all three. Uh, there is a, another popular one that uh, it's hard to find anymore. It's called Calgon. Now I'm talking about Calgon powder, not Calgon the liquid detergent stuff, uh, which is a completely different thing. So I'm not even going to go, go into it. Calgon well, and this one, they used to have phosphates and the phosphates would bind with the hard water deposits and completely dissolve in water, which was great because actually if you could do that, you wouldn't have to wash it away. All of these three, they are called precipitating. And what that means is when they do their chemical reaction and bind with the hard water stuff that you want taken away, it forms a crystal and that crystal then has to be washed away. So all three of these are precipitating. The great thing about Calgon was it had phosphates. Uh, well, this one had phosphates too, and they do not have that anymore. Um, phosphates have been banned like in the nineties or something. Anyway, phosphates work great. <laughs> However, they are terrible for uh, once they get down into, you know, like uh, sewage plants and stuff. I mean, they'll just absolutely kill all sorts of living environments. When you're ready to clean your tanks with these, you want to make sure you dissolve them in hot water first. So get a bucket, put all of your ingredients in and pour some hot water in. Now, the quantity that you use of each is going to depend on several different factors. One is how often you wash. If you wash more, you don't have to use as much. And it also depends on how hard your water is in wherever you're at. And if you're getting a lot of hard water deposits. And it also depends on how often you're driving around, which will naturally slosh around whatever's in the tank, kind of cleaning out the sides. So I would just recommend you know, think in terms of cups, like, you know, start out with a cup of each or, you know, a cup of these two and a half cup of this. 
So the best way to do this is after you've already emptied your tanks and make sure you close the tanks so that all of this stays in and doesn't run out. Once you've got it all dissolved in your bucket, then go ahead and just pour it down the hatch and follow that with a bunch of hot water. So how do I get hot water down my toilet? Well, it's pretty easy because it's in an RV. You can let your hot water and your soapy mixture hang out in your tank for no more than a couple hours. It shouldn't sit for a long time because it is caustic. And after it makes all the chemical reactions and bonds to the hard water and all the grease particles, it's going to form, you know, crystals and precipitates and those need to be washed away. Now note that this does not disinfect the tank. This is just a flush and a good wash. If you want to disinfect the tank, which is a good idea to do, you know, even just once or twice a year as a full timer, then we're going to use bleach. Now, before I even go any further, never put bleach in your tank if anything is in your tank. Why? Because everybody knows you never mix ammonia and bleach. And what do you think is in pee? <laughs> ammonia. Do not put bleach in a full black tank or even partially full. People also might say, oh, well, you can put all these chemicals in laundry with bleach. It should be okay. But you don't have a ton of pee going around in your washing machine. So do not put bleach in your tank if anything is in there except fresh water, period. The other thing that I want to say about bleach do not let bleach hang out in your tank for more than a couple minutes. It doesn't need to be in there for more than like two minutes. And it takes more than two minutes to fill it up. So once you fill up your tank with a little bit of bleach water, let it out. It's done. If you let bleach sit in your tank, it'll eat away at, you know, you've got rubber gaskets and seals and stuff in there and you don't want those being eaten away from bleach. So now we can go over how to disinfect your tank, which is with bleach. After completely cleaning out your tank, fill it with water, put, and you only need, if you had a 50 gallon tank, you would need barely two cups of bleach and you probably have a smaller tank. So you probably don't need anything more than one to two cups of bleach in a full tank. Fill it up with plain water, put your bleach in, let it sit for two minutes or, you know, put the bleach in as you're filling it up so it's got time. Then just flush it out. After that, if you really want to go crazy, you know, fill it up with fresh water again and flush that out so you have no bleach remaining in your tank. Stay tuned for the next video on more safe yet potent cleaners in your RV for tasks such as unclogging drains, soap scum removal, general surface cleaners, glass cleaners, and floor cleaners that are safe and easy to pack in your RV or survival kit.